Buenos días. Good morning. Now it turns out nobody speaks neither Spanish nor English. Buenos días. Good morning. Do I have to take out any other languages? I'm like, come on. <laughs> French, bonjour. That's all I know. Maybe croissant, maybe, but that's it. That's all I know. But be besides that, I'm done. I'm done. All right. Let us read from Psalms. Psalms 117, one of my favorite psalms. Fun fact, the shortest psalm there is. Psalms 117. O oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations, and praise Him, all people. For His merciful kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this wonderful Sabbath and the opportunity to be here once again here, Lord. And I want to ask you, Lord, that you may hide me behind you, Lord. That the words that may come out may be yours, Lord. That your Holy Spirit may be here, Lord. And the Holy Spirit may be the translator, Lord, for me. That you may, please, Lord, be with the words that I will say, Lord, that the message may come directly for, from you, Lord. And above all things, Lord, that you may be glorified. Thank you for all the blessings of today. And help us understand the message. In your name, Amen. Well, this week was a busy week, right? Did you guys get a lot of rain here? Yes? A lot of rain? Uh, in where was it that it started raining so much? In Veracruz. It, it rains very often, but there was a, like, a, like a, a very big cloud, one of those uh, tropical, like, weird things that we get in the Gulf before a hurricane, and it started raining a lot, and my friends called me that maybe, maybe, maybe uh, today church was going to be canceled because it's very flooded. But uh, I got a text today in the morning that they were able to go to church. So praise God for that. And uh, this week, I was also privileged to go to my first pastor's retreat. It was very interesting. It was very, very fun to see that there are a lot of uh, pastors in this conference. And I found out I am the youngest pastor in the whole Texas conference. Wow. <laughs> and uh, it's... It's, it's fun to think that, yes, I am the youngest one, but uh, that also means that one day I will not be young, which gives me chills. <laughs> so the scripture of today comes from the book of 2 Kings. Today, uh, we are going to let the Lord lead, and I am going to let the Spirit talk. It is currently 12. So let us not look at the clock. Let us look into Scripture. Now Naaman, the Bible says, on 2 Kings chapter 5. We're going to be on 2 Kings chapter 5. So don't lose that page. We're going to be looking at 2 Kings chapter 5. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. And the word of the Lord says, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable because by him the Lord had given the living deliverance unto Syria. He was also a man of many battle. So here we have this man, a mighty man of valor, a captain, an honorable man, a person who is somebody important. Here we see that, 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 that he has, he was the captain, the Bible mentions, that he was the captain of the host of the king of Syria. He was the commander in chief. He was the general five star, the one above everybody, only below the king. He was a man that was a well-studied man. 
He had a lot of knowledge about battle. He had a lot of knowledge about strategy, about communications, about supplies. He had gone to the top best universities that had ever existed back then in Syria. He was not a usual man. He was a very, very important man. Now the Bible doesn't stop here. And it says that, the, that, the, that Naaman was a great man with his master. He was a great man, a great servant, a man of in, 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 indisputable uh, uh, honor. He was such a knowledgeable and wise man that the king would turn to him and told, tell him, Now Naaman, what do you think about this? What do you want? What, what do you think? What would you do in this situation? He was a man that was a great man with his master. He was a great servant and he was a great leader. Now, the Bible also mentions that he was an honorable man. He was a man that did what was right when the right thing had to be done. And when the situation seemed a little bit tricky, he was an honorable man to walk away from whatever troubled him. Because this honorable man had the opportunity to be faithful to what he believed was right. And it's very interesting because we come to this, to this, uh, to this uh, mighty man Valor that continues saying that he was an honorable man of disreputable, disreputable condition because by him the Lord had given him deliverance. It's interesting to know that he was not a Christian. Yet he was so honorable and so faithful to what he knew. That even though he was over there in the darkness, the Lord from heaven looked down and saw him and saw a pile of gold and said, even though he is not my follower, he is an honorable man. And God said, that's a good man. And because he is a good man, I will give him victory in battle. And I will give him a, a, a mighty position and I will bless him so that by his hand his people will be delivered. Isn't it interesting how honor can also be looked at by God? Isn't it interesting that maybe sometimes we do not know the whole Bible but the little we do know we follow and God honors that. To the point that he says, that is a good man. That is a good woman. And because he is with me, like Psalms 91 says, he will call to me and I will answer. And God said, that man, Naaman, he is an honorable man. And the Bible continues to say that he had given deliverance unto Syria and he was also a mighty man in valor. He was strong. He was courageous. He was the best of the best. Do you guys know what a mighty man of valor is? A mighty man of valor, in my de definition, are the equivalent to the Navy SEALs of today. To the black ops, the black operatives, the, the special forces of any, any country. Uh, a mighty man of valor is a person that goes to do that special and impossible mission. The mission that, that not even the president is aware of, that they send seven people to that mission and they are knowing that they need to do that job and then they come back like two, three days later. That is a mighty man of valor. A man who is not afraid to do what is needed, but at the same time, he was honorable to do what was right. What a man, right? What a man. And you know, it's interesting because we haven't finished reading the, bear, the, 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 the verse. And uh, the Bible says many great things about this man. And I'm pretty sure it implies even more. 
I am pretty sure this was a perfect man in the eyesight of whoever saw him. But the Bible finishes the verse just like this. But he was a what? A leper. He was a leper. There are many things that have been found right with you. A lot of things that have been given honor to you. And a lot of things that have been accounted good towards you. But, there is one wrong thing with you. And that one thing is enough to put you in the situation of death just like the worst sinner that has ever walked this earth. James chapter 2 verse 10 mentions that whoever follows all of the commandments, but it's faithful, it's unfaithful in only how many? One commandment is guilty of how many? All of the commandments. It's interesting to know that this man had many positive things to him, but there was one wrong thing with him. There is only one wrong thing with you. And because of that one wrong thing, you can fall into the line of the worst sinners that have ever been walking on this earth. Just because of one thing. That one thing. You don't have to say it. You know already what it is. But that one thing can sink you as slow as possible. So we continue saying, and it's interesting because there is, 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 uh, is, there is uh, such a... Su there is such a discussion because this is a great man, but there was one wrong thing with him. And you know, he had leprosy, and at the time, leprosy was worse than being deaf. Because leprosy was believed to be the judgment of God in you. The finger and the righteousness of God had gone through you, and had touched you, and deemed you not worthy. Therefore, you're a sinner. And because of that, the Jews believed, and God allowed this belief to go, that being a leopard was a sin itself. Because God had deemed you not worthy. And it's interesting because the situation of leprosy back then was so bad that people had to go and uh, they had to quit their houses, they had to quit their jobs, they had to quit their church, and they had to leave, live in a house all by themselves. And they had to cover their mouths with a cloth, because it was believed back then that the air they breathed, they breathed, uh, would contaminate the air around them. And not only that, but as the situation worsened in you, if you wanted to go from one place to another, and you saw that people were coming to you, you had to tell yourself and cover yourself and shout to the loud to your voice, UNCLEAN! UNCLEAN! And you would pass all over the town, screaming those words, so that people knew not to get close to you. Because you were an unclean person. And here we have Naaman shouting to the top of his voice, unclean every time he went to the store, unclean he had to keep on shouting so that people wouldn't get close to him. You know, it's interesting because it just seems that there is no hope for the person that had to be a leopard back then. There was no hope, no, no chance of redemption. Your clothes had to be burned each time you changed. Each time you went to eat, the, the utensils had to be melted down 
because they wanted to burn everything that was wrong with you. And the personal things were not very good either because you would shed your skin and parts of your skin would just fall off. And I don't know if you guys have seen modern leprosy, but it's exactly the same. Your fingers would just stop working and one day you would just try to touch this and you break off a finger, you break off part of your leg, and you start just dismantling yourself slowly and slowly and your breath would smell bad and your teeth would start to fall off and your hair would fall off and you would always be so red that you cannot go outside to the sun that is the situation of Naaman a sinner the worst sinner but you know it's interesting because as we read already, God saw in him an honorable man. And the Lord said, because I like this man, even though he has leprosy, I will help him. I will deliver him. Because it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how many sins you have. Or if you have only one sin, the Lord sees in you pure gold and He is willing to, co to go come and help you get out of wherever you are. Just like He did to Naaman. And it's interesting because the Lord says, I will deliver him and I will make a plan so that he can be an even more honorable man than what he is. So we will continue on verse 2. Verse 2 reads like this. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought back away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. You know, two things that you can learn out of this. You cannot escape the word of the Lord. Everybody will get a chance one way or another. One way or another, you will hear the voice of the Lord. And when you hear it, you have to realize that that is the Lord calling you. And it may come in the weirdest and strangest situations. For instance, this. The Bible says that it was a little maid. A little girl. The one that preached this message. You know, we, we, we tend to be starstruck by the great names of uh, um, uh, Pastor Finley or uh, Pastor Craig or uh, for Spanish Pastor Bullon and Pastor Rojas. But it doesn't matter who preaches the message. What is worth is the message itself. It doesn't matter if your pastor is the youngest one of the whole conference. Because I am not talking. The one who is talking is the Lord. And this message comes directly from Him. And just like this little maid was given a great message to preach, I will continue to tell this story. And it's interesting because the story says this. Verse 3. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, where the prophet is in Samaria, would you send him unto Samaria because there is a prophet and he can recover him of his leprosy. And, he went, and she went out and she said to the Lord and then she said to another servant and verse 5, And then the king of Syria, how did the message get to the king so fast? You know, it's interesting because we start to think about when a man is dying and he knows it, he acts like this because he doesn't want to die. But you know, it's sad to know that there are people that are dying and they don't know it. 
Have you started thinking to yourself that half of mission doesn't know that what the Bible says? Have you started thinking that there is people that are going to die and they don't know it? Meditate on that. Let us continue with the story. The Bible continues mentioning on verse 5, And the word got to the king, and he said to the king, and the king said, Go to go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel, and he will depart. And he took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of ruminant. You know, it's interesting because Naaman, as soon as he heard the message of salvation, and he heard that there was a help in Israel, he said to his boss, Boss, I need a vacation right now. I need to take five sick days right now because I need to go and I need to make this. And the, and the king said, Go, go! Go, hurry! You, you should have gone yesterday. You shouldn't have even told me. I do not want you to die. You're an honorable man. You're a mighty man. I need you to go so that you can be healed. And it's interesting because the Bible mentions that he took 10 talents of silver. And I read, and that is a lot of silver. A lot of silver. 6,000 pieces of gold. That's... A that's two, three chests already. And ten changes of clothes. And you may say, oh yeah, it's ten suits. No, it's not only ten suits. A change of clothes back then was the wear for the whole week. That's a change of clothes. And they were all our Mandy Express. All well together. With ties and shoes and everything. The best of the best. Oh, this was a man that was ready to give anything for salvation. This was a man that was willing to give anything so that he could be cleaned. And now it's interesting because we continue reading on chapter 6. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, Now when this letter is to come unto thee, behold, I have twelve sent a name and my servant to thee, and thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And you will recover him of his leprosy, and it will come to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes, and he said, Am I God to kill or to make alive that this man has sent me to recover a man of his leprosy? Therefore consider, I pray you, and see how he's seeking to quarrel against me. So here comes Naaman, and he gives the letter to the king of Israel, and he says to him, Here! Heal my servant, said the king of Syria. And you know, the, the, the king of Israel said to himself, Am I God? I cannot heal this person. I am not, I am not worth, what will I do with him, you know? I'm pretty sure it's only him. He is sending a reconnaissance team because he knows that his army is bigger than mine and he wants to take over my kingdom. And you know what the king did? What the king did is that he ripped his clothes. And he was running butt naked through the whole palace. Throwing himself to the floor. A sign of great depression. A sign of great grief. And everybody was saying, what is wrong with the king? What is wrong with the king? And the king would come and say, look at the letter. Look at the letter. They're going to come and destroy us. So the palace back then was in great, great panic. And everybody started ripping their clothes out. And everybody started crying and shouting. Everybody started being panicked. Now, if we go to verse 8. And it was so, when Elijah, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had ripped his clothes, that he sent to the king saying, Wherefore has thou rent thy clothes? ¿Por qué te has roto las vestiduras? Why have you ripped your clothes? Let him now come to me, and he shall know there is a prophet in Israel. Amen. King, why are you making a fool of yourself? Why are you letting us down? 
Why are you ripping your clothes? In the first place, the maid said, Go to the prophet in Israel, not to the king. Right? You know, there is certain things that the government can't just do for you. With all my respect to our governmental system, but they are not going to be able to fix the problems that we have. Because the problems that we have are caused by sin. Only God can fix the problem of sin. And just like this man, he tried to put his faith into kings and into the prince and to the princes and, 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 the, and all the prince that were there in the palace. But here we have the man of God stepping into the picture and saying, send him to me. So here comes a man running out of breath saying, King, King, the prophet has spoken. Send him there. Send him to me, said the prophet. Because only God was able to solve his problem. And on verse 9, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elijah. You know, it's interesting because here we have this great path, probably twice as big as the church. And, and, and uh, Naaman, an important man, he was traveling in a chariot and he was traveling with bodyguards and probably 2,000 people behind him and probably t uh, a thousand uh, camels behind him carrying all of his stuff. And as he is heading over there to the church of the prophet, he realizes it is not a cathedral. He realizes that the prophet had a small church. He realizes that the path starts getting narrower and narrower and narrower. And he came to a way in which there was a sign which said, House of Elijah that way. And it was probably one of those pathways that are about this big so that you could just go hiking. Have you guys been through those trails? Yes? Probably was one of those in which it was probably about this width, and the grass was growing, and there was uh, 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 stems from the trees and twigs that had, were covering the way. And Naaman said to himself, are you, are you serious? I have to go through there? I, I, I mean, like, look at the pathway. That it's paved over here. Can I go through there? Can't I just pass through there and go there? Where am I going? Why am I going that way? And one of his servants told him, Master, that narrow way is the way to salvation. That narrow way and hard way is the way which you are to walk. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14. I don't want to quote it. I want to actually read it. Matthew chapter 7 Chapter 7, verse 13, the Bible says in chapter 7, 13, Enter ye to the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, paved with, with a lot of pit stops next to it, paved is the way that leadeth to what? Destruction. And many are the ones that go through there. The paved way is the way to destruction. But verse 14 says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few are the ones that find it. So here we have Naaman saying, All right, well, if you say so, let's walk through here. He probably got a spider web in his head, and like he hit himself with the thorns in his legs, and... He finally got to the, to the house of Elijah and he saw that it was a small, humble house, a small church, very small church. And you know, here we have a man used to the palaces, 
used to the kings, used to that they will come to me and, and they will listen to me. But here we have Elijah on verse 10. And Elijah sent a messenger unto him. So not even the prophet. The prophet didn't even come out. He sent his servant. And the servant gave him a message saying, Go and wash to the Jordan River seven times, and thy flesh shall come clean, and come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. You will be clean. <laughs> and you know what the next verse says? And Naaman was wroth. Naaman was mad. He got angry. He got pissed. Why? Doesn't he know who I am? I am Naaman. I am the greatest of the greatest that there is. Doesn't he know that I could buy him and sell him twice in a row just today? Doesn't he know my power and my influence? Doesn't he know that I am a, a graduate of the great Andrews University? With two doctorates, three masters, and four bachelor's degrees? Doesn't he know who I am? He doesn't even come outside. He sent his servant. And when the servant spoke the words, he got mad. I don't know why, why people sometimes get mad when they hear the word of the Lord. I don't know why people sometimes get so frustrated with what the Bible says. Would you rather for me to lie to you? Would you rather for me to tell you lies and tell you that it is okay? You might find peace. You might find something that you're looking for. But is it true? Think about that. Why does the Bible sometimes make a lot of people angry? And you know, Naaman said to himself, I'm out of here. There is no necessity for me to be here dealing with this shenanigans. I will not deal with this. I will go and I will do as I wish. And you know, you know he was leaving because he was mad. And he said to himself on verse 11 on verse 11 and he went away and behold he said I thought I thought that the Bible was going to be better I thought that probably the pastor would come to me and, and he would be with me 24 7 I thought that maybe it was going to be less hot I thought that for potluck there would be meat at least, or chicken. I thought that, that, that it was going to be better than this. I thought, I thought, he started saying to himself, I thought it was going to be better than this. And you know, once again I want to stress, it is not the man, it's the message. Because he was mad because he, he wouldn't even come out. But he, had, was, he was given a message of salvation. And you know, on verse 12, he said to himself, You know, why, why does he send me to the Jordan River? Doesn't he know what the Jordan River is? The Jordan River is, is a filthy river. It's a bad river. As soon as I have heard, it's a seasonal river. So during the summer, it's one of those rivers that it just has a lot of ponds and a lot of mud, a lot of bugs, and a lot of snakes. And when you stir the water, it's probably one of those waters that has been there one or two months. So you know how the water gets a smell? And you know, it probably Naaman thought to himself, why is he sending me to that river? Why is he sending me there? Isn't any other of the rivers better than this? He's probably sending me to that river to wash to that river. Pff, contaminated water. He's going to cause me an even bigger problem than what I have already. Why am I going there? 
Isn't it better to go to another river? The Bible mentions, he mentions two rivers. Is it better for me to go to Avana or Pava rivers, which are better? Does it really matter what river do I go to? Does it really matter what day I go to church? Does it really matter what if I follow 10 or 9? Does it really matter what I do? What's the difference? Nobody will notice. Nobody will notice. And you know it's interesting because he turned around and he galloped away. But he was galloping off to die. He was going to die. And you know, when, when he was going over there, one of his servants finally reached him and said, Master, this is on verse 13. Master, if a prophet had said to you, do some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? Or how much rather would it say, he just told you to go and wash and be clean? Master, if he had told you to do a great thing, would, he, would you have done it? Don't you have 6,000 pieces of gold to buy him as much things as he need? If he had told you to build him a bigger, and bigger house, don't you have 10 talents of silver to do that? If he had not asked you for all your... He didn't even ask you for the clothes. He didn't ask you for anything. Now people are even like surprised that we are not begging. Wouldn't it be better for you to actually do that? Master, we love you very much. We don't want you to die. We don't want you to die. And Naaman once again remember his situation and say, Whoa, all right. Um, I think it's worth a shot. Why not? And he turned around. Oh, my brother, my sister, if you are to, turn, if you are to be saved, you have to turn around. You have to make a U-turn. And I mean you have to turn, not the church, not the doctrines to fit to your likings. You have to turn to the path of the Lord. And here we see this man turning and finally getting to the river. And you know, the river, as I said, it's full of weeds, and it's full of bugs, and it's full of snakes and bugs, and the water is stinky, and there is so much mud, and, and, and I mean, like, he didn't want to seem to go there. He didn't want for people to look at him when he went there. He, he wanted to be a, a, a different person. Nobody will notice when I go there. Nobody will notice. I mean, like, I'll, I'll probably just sneak in when nobody's looking around. I'll probably just try to go. And you know, he went inside. And, and here's a rich man going to the riverbed. And everybody's just looking at him. And he turned around and everybody's just like... <laughs> nobody's looking. Nobody wants to see him. And here he comes and he goes for the first time. And he puts his, his first leg and he starts sinking in the mud. And he goes inside, and, 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 and the, he stirs the water, and the water is so stinky. And, and, and he just, uh, like he wants to throw up, but he's like, oh, all right, uh, might as well one. And he gets his nose, and he goes down, and, uh, and he comes back in, like, uh, like right as the cork, he comes back up. No change. Nope, not working. I'm out. I'm out of here. I'm going back to the mask because it didn't work. Master! Master! The prophet said how many times? Seven times. Not one time. If you want to follow the word of the Lord, make sure, follow it to the letter. You know, out of his first dip, we can probably get this lesson. When you start following the Lord, when you start following the Lord, probably you're not going to notice a lot of changes. Probably you're not going to notice that a lot of people are going to start treating you different. But you have to persevere so that you can get the reward. 
And here we continue, and he goes on the second time, and he said, all right, might as well make it a second time. And he goes on a second time, and he goes down, and he puffs back up. And now, he's hurting. Now the, the dirty water, and the, and the sand, and the, and, the, and the dirt started to get in between his open wounds. And, and he's starting to hurt, and it started to itch him, and he's crying out of pain, and he's saying, Ah, oh, why? Why? You know? He's starting to itch, and, and, and his skin's starting to peel off again. His finger, it's already uh, starting to, to dis dismembered here. And the, third, and the third time he goes, and he goes back around, and he wants to get out, and he says, Seven times, Master! Go down again, try it one more time! You're already in your third try. And he goes back again, and he puffs back up, and he looks around, and now the water's starting to turn pink. The man is bleeding. And, and, and he's, he's, he's covered with, with everything. But you know, it is an ancient saying that there is no rebirth without pain and blood. Sometimes when you start following Christ, it's going to hurt. Sometimes when you start doing stuff, it's, it's going to start to itch. Sometimes when you start doing as the Lord says, it's not going to be as good as you thought it was. But you have to continue to follow the instructions. And he went back again and he said, No, I'm coming out of here. There is no way. I'm going. Seven times, Master. This is your fourth time already. Come on, go. And he went back up and he looked around and he didn't see any more water. Now his skin is all over the water. And the water is starting to look pink. Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. I'm coming out of here. Seven times, Master. Go down again. You're already in your fifth time. You're in your fifth time already, Master. Come on, you can do it. And he said to him, so, well, can't get worse than this. If I'm going to follow the Lord, might as well make it completely. And he started to go down fifth time and he popped back up. And, and, and his, 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 his eyelids are already starting to hurt even more. And, and this time a bug hit him in the face. And there's a snake ready to get into the water too. And, and he went back again. And he's coming out and he started tripping because the water is so muddy. And he started to sink. But he's saying, oh, might as well make it one more time. And the sixth time he went back down. And the water is so smelly and now he has that smell inside of him and now everything is hurting and he's ready to say Lord may it be your will that my sufferings might be rewarded by you and he got his nose and he went back down again this time when he was down it was different because he felt the chill he felt something different. And when he came back out, his skin was as smooth as the skin of a baby. His skin was now ready. His dismembered finger was put all back again. His eyelids were ready again. And all his hair started to be showing signs that he was growing hair. <gasps> Praise the Lord! I have done all that the Lord has asked. I have done everything as the Lord has asked and the Lord has rewarded me. The Lord has rewarded me. You know, the Lord keeps His promises. If He tells you something, it's because He's going to do it. doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense. Sometimes I talk a lot about a lot of stories of the Bible where it doesn't make sense. But when we finish, oh boy, trust me, it starts to make sense. Sometimes where God is taking you, it's not going to make a lot of sense. Why am I in mission? It's mission. I couldn't even make it to McAllen. Couldn't even make it to Harlingen. Not even Brownsville. is like 15 minutes away from the beach. Why am I in mission? Sometimes... The plans of God don't make a lot of sense. But if you continue to follow 
his instructions, he will guide you to where you need to go. When you start to celebrate the Lord, it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. Because I've, I've seen a lot of my friends, I invited some of my friends to church. And it's interesting because when you start serving the Lord and you start going to church, your parents are going to turn against you. Your brothers are going to turn against you. I've seen a lot of people that, 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 that they are better with their children going Friday night to God knows where, to do God knows what, and come back at God knows what hour. And they're safer feeling that they're there than then waking up early to go to church on Sabbath. They feel better because they think that they are doing something better. When you start following the Lord, you're going to get in trouble. And a lot of people may start turning against you. A lot of people may start not liking you that much. But trust me, the way of the Lord is narrow and hard and stern. But once you walk it, that path leads to salvation. To conclude, the way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross may be hard. Nobody said it was going to be easy. But we are not alone, are we? Hasn't he promised? Matthew 24, and I will be, no, Matthew 28, and I will be with you every day until I come back. Amen? Doesn't Philippians 4.13 say that I can do anything through God who strengthens, through Jesus who strengthens me? My brothers and my sisters, may we follow the instructions of God just like Naaman did. That even though that it may hurt sometimes, even though it may be a little bit difficult sometimes, the message of the cross leads home. May the word of God be glorified on this morning.